Put on your comfortable shoes. I got mine on. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is our this is our final deposit okay. in the series Economy Interruptions. Has that helped anybody? Amen. Amen. Yeah, I know it helped me. I thank God for sending his transformational word. I thank God for not yes. allowing us to miss his window. Yes. Come on, here, somebody. That's right. Don't 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 miss don't miss your window. You got a window that God has given you to do some great things in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't get caught up and distracted okay. and overlook this window that you have. Amen. Amen. That was last week's sermon. If you missed it, go ahead and check it out. It blessed me. Thank you, Lord, for that. And He's giving me one more. Giving me one more to leave it all in line with. Come on, help yourself. Second me... Samuel, the 21st chapter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read from the New International Version. Mm -hmm. There's something in there that I want to I want to okay. hinge mm -hmm. my point on. Yeah. But I promise you I'm gonna give you the substance. So whatever version you're reading from, you'll be able to keep up. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> when you have it, somebody say amen. Amen. It says, during the reign of David, there was a famine for three successive years. So David sought the face of the Lord. The Lord said, it is on account of Saul and his bloodstained house. My God. It is because he put the Gibeonites to death. This is on Saul's account. Have, have you ever, <laughs> have you ever found yourself being held for a debt on somebody else's account. Oh my mm. God. Lord Jesus. Oh my God. It says the king summoned the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not a part of Israel. Catch that. Mm. But were survivors of the Amorites. Catch that. The Israelites had sworn to spare them but Saul in his zeal for Israel and Judah had tried to annihilate them. David asked the Gibeonites, what shall I do for you? How shall I make atonement mm. so that you may bless the Lord's inheritance? My God. Okay. <laughs> the Gibeonites answered, we have no right to demand silver or gold from Saul or his family, nor do we have the right to put anyone in Israel to death. What do you want me to do for you then, David said? What you want, man? Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. It says, they answered the king. My God. As for the man who destroyed us and plotted against us so that we have been decimated mm. and have no place anywhere in Israel let seven of his male descendants be, be given to us to be killed mm. and their body exposed before the Lord at Gibeah of Saul the Lord's chosen one my God mm. it's kind of funny because uh, uh, this ain't my notes but this is for free for somebody it's kind of funny how people uh, would say that God chose a person for you when the truth of the matter is you chose that person for yourself. Mm. Oh my God. That's just the word for somebody. That was free. My, my, my. You're welcome. My. So the king said, I will give them to you. The king spared Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the oath before the Lord between David and Jonathan, son of Saul. But the king took um, Armani and Mephibosheth, the two sons of Ahaz's daughter Rizpah, whom she had born to Saul together with the five sons of the daughters of Merib. Now, so let me pause right here because I don't want to confuse anybody. There are Break two men uh -huh. by the name of Mephibosheth. There is one who we know to be Jonathan's son that we'll be talking about in just a moment. But then he has an uncle. He has an uncle named Mephibosheth that you may not have heard of. Right. Uh, but he's right here. The uncle is the one that David gave over to be killed. And I have to pause for a moment because I saw the name uh, indication. And I, and, and I just need to tell somebody, it doesn't matter who you're named after. That doesn't define what your destiny will be. Oh, my God. You better talk. Just because we got the same name don't mean we got the same destiny. Oh, oh God. Y'all, right I, 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 I'll, I'll bless right God all right about here. myself. That's it right there. Whom she had born to Adriel, son of Barzilla, the the male the Melodite, that I was getting. It's all right. He handed them over to the Gibeonites, who killed them and exposed their bodies on a hill before the Lord. All seven of them fell together. They were put to death during the first days of harvest. Mm. Now, just as the barley harvest begun, that and all of this, that's the part that really got me. Okay. That, that he went through this whole story, this whole event, the narrator 
uh, uh, of 2 Samuel went through this whole entire event about the Gibeonites and about uh, Saul's household and about David and about Mephibosheth. And then at the end, he said, oh, yeah, by the way, yeah. it was doing a harvest. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it grabbed my attention because, because if you remember, the first verse said, now there was a famine for three years. So how do we have a season of harvest when nothing is growing? Wow. God help me this morning. Wow. So the Lord impressed it upon my heart to minister just for a moment from the topic. The harvest mm -hmm. of your healing. Teach us. Oh God right help me Jesus. <laughs> ah. on, the harvest of your healing. We're, we're, we're living in a world today where everybody wants to be healed. But nobody wanted to wait on the harvest for it. Oh, my Lord. God, Jesus, I, I, help me, Holy oh, Ghost. My Lord. Everybody want to walk as if we are walking in a culture of healing. Yeah. But nobody really want to wait for the harvest for it. Mm -hmm. Oh, in, in economy interruptions. Can I interrupt help somebody? Us, Lord. Help uh, us, Lord. Um, anything, and I'll give you this, and I'll pray. I'll get into this thing. Anything you expect to be sustainable. Through seasonal elements mm -hmm. takes time to develop. My God. Anything you expect to be sustainable yeah. through seasonal elements must take time to develop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't put an undeveloped tree in a storm and expect it to stay. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You, you can't put something out too fast. You can't grow something too soon and expect it to go through every season without doing it. That makes sense. If you expect things to make it through seasons, if you expect uh, uh, your children to make it through seasons of their life, yeah. you've got to give them time to develop. That's right. Amen, somebody. That's good. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word and your truth. I ask that you use me yes, Lord. as only you can. I trust you this morning. I love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated wherever you are. You may be seated. It, 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 the passage... The passage we just read, if I can just give you some context about this. The passage we just read within the biblical uh, narrative uh, uh, of this uh, last few chapters of 2 Samuel, it appears to be happening at the uh, conclusion of David's life. Because David's life is coming to an end. He, he's now in the latter days of his life. Uh, in, in 2 Samuel, it goes on to end when David as an old man, he goes into 1 Kings, where he, where, where he has uh, his son Adonijah and then uh, Solomon, whom he anoints, who, who takes over his place and he dies in the early chapters of 1 uh, Kings. But, but, but this is the, the, the conclusion of David's life. And, and the story appears to be at the conclusion, but it's really not. Right. This really is not happening in, in, in David's latter years. This actually is an epi uh, epilu uh, epilogue excuse me, uh, of the narrator looking back over David's years uh, of his reign, and he's yeah. given us a summation of David's encountering or events that happened in his life. This is not happening in David's old age. This actually happened when he was a younger man. See, when you look at the construct of the, uh, of the context, it talks in, 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 in words of, of his not knowing Mephibosheth on a personal basis. Uh -huh. But we know by this point in David's life that he had encountered and experienced with Mephibosheth. And also, if you read first, uh, uh, 2 Samuel chapter number 16, you'll see where, 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 where Solomon's, uh, um, where, where Solomon's family members, Shemaiah Shema is his name, he speaks about this uh, same text when he's giving David uh, a piece of his mind. My God. He's cursing him. Not cussing him. Oh. Y'all say, well, I can cuss somebody else in the Bible. No, not cussing him. Curse. He's cursing him. It's a art. He's cursing him. When Absalom tries to take over the kingdom, Shemaiah begins to curse David. It begins to use the same phrases that's used in this text. Uh, the blood thirsty house of Saul. He begins to use those, those textual uh, uh, contexts, clues to let us know that this event actually happened prior to David being old. Uh, most theologians would say that it actually happened uh, around 2 Samuel chapter 9. And it's very important for us to understand because we need to put it in proper context. Because yeah. whenever you try to get proper context about something, if you take it from its original context, you will always misinterpret the text that you're trying to interpret. Mm. Right. 
That's for any conversation that you have. That's any time you, you communicate with somebody. If you don't understand the context for the text, then you always misinterpret what's trying to be interpreted to you. Mm. Does that make sense? So it's very vital that we put it in this proper context because we need to understand what was happening during this period uh, that David uh, was really, really being um, involved with a season of famine. Well, he's, well, he's in a season of uh, 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 of, of, of what it appears to be a difficult time where he has to put to death seven male descendants of Saul. Yeah. We need to understand the context. And, and it's kind of funny when you look at this story and then you go back and you put it in the context of 2 Samuel 9 and then you read up through. Because when you look at it from this perspective, it recounts a history that, look, that, that appears to be one-sided. And it's kind of interesting to me that oftentimes, depending on who's telling the story, when they look back at the history of an event, yeah. It's always mm -hmm. one sided. Well, you went there. You went there. It's all right. <laughs> Do y'all know anybody that'll tell a story based off one side? Come on here, somebody. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they look back in just one rearview mirror and they see one side of the story. And, and with anything, if you just look in one rearview mirror and see one side, you're bound to have a collision yeah, yeah. eventually. Mm -hmm. Help us, Lord. My Help God. Us, Lord. Whenever you're talking to somebody, whenever you're communicating with somebody, make sure you look at both sides of the picture. Why? Because if you don't, you end up getting in a crash and you're trying to figure out why. What, what, what's the, why, why are we bumping heads? Because you're always looking at one side of the story. So the recount of this is a little interesting to me because it, it, it displays the pain from one perspective, the Kibbonites. The Kibbonites being the pain as if there was no additional pain that happened. But the truth of the matter is, the Gibbonites wasn't the only people in pain. Mm -hmm. The Gibbonites weren't the only people hurting. David was in pain. The Fellowship was in pain. Yeah. The house of Saul was in pain. The mothers of the of the boys uh, who were killed were in pain. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. It, it, it was pain that had to be presented from a different perspective. So to put it in this proper context, we need to understand that the pain was just not dealing with one group of people, but the pain was spread abroad. Sometimes we'll look at our own history and our own perspectives, and we'll think that we're the only one that's being hurt by it. Wow. God help me, Jesus. Wow. We'll look at things in our own viewpoint and think that we're the only ones impacted, not understanding that it's more people that's in pain than just us. Mm. Yeah. God, I got something to say. Can you walk with me? See, in 2 Samuel, if you understand 2 Samuel chapter 9, and I'm going to give you the full context or construct of that particular chapter, but I'll, I'll, sum, I'll summarize it for you. It's when David is looking for somebody in the house of Saul. He, he says, is there anyone else in the house of Saul that I can show kindness to for, 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 for my friend, or for my brother Jonathan, for Jonathan's sake? That's what you will see when you start reading 2 Samuel chapter number 9. He's looking for somebody to show kindness to for Jonathan's sake. For the covenant he has with Jonathan. Yeah. He wants to show somebody kindness. But Jonathan says, and, and, and then the servant Ziba. Ziba comes over there and he says, well, there is a son of Jonathan named Mephibosheth. Yeah. And he's in Lodabar. Mm -hmm. and, and David is looking for somebody because if you put this inside of that context, you understand that David had just killed, or let me put it this way, it, it, it's Mephibosheth old men, old men killed themselves, uh, killed him. But uh, one of Saul's sons has just died, and now the Gibeonites are asking for the rest of his sons and his grandsons to now be killed. So now when you look at 2 Samuel chapter number 9, it makes sense a little bit more that David is saying, is there anybody else right. in the house of Saul? Yeah. Why? Because it, everybody wants to kill these people off. Everybody wants to destroy them. They're losing things left and right. They're losing things uh, at their fingertips. They're, they're, they're every, at, at every turn, they're losing somebody Somebody's dying, somebody's leaving, somebody's walking out. And God just put on my heart to ask somebody, if, you're, if, you're, if you are able to sustain what's left in you by how much that you've lost in you. Mm -hmm. Oh God, let me put it to you this way. It said, the Holy Ghost said, are you still left wow. after what's lost? Oh. Or have you been lost too wow. because of what's left? Wow. Oh God. Are you still left in your body? Are you still there? After the fight with cancer, do you have something left in you? Wow. After the accident you've been in, do you have something left in you? Yeah. After the surgery that you've been through, do you have something left in you? After the miscarriage, do you have something left in you? Yeah. After the man walked out, do you have something left in you? Oh after God. the divorce, do you have something left in you? Or are you left 
because of what you've lost, you've left yourself. Do you have something left? He said, is there anybody in the house of Saul? Do I have anybody left yeah. in this house I can show kindness to? Ziba says, yes, there's a, there's a boy by the name of Mephibosheth. Mm -hmm. And we know the story of Mephibosheth, how his nurse uh, ran with him and she dropped him at the age of five and, and she, 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 she crippled him. She crippled him uh, uh, from the age of five all the way until now, until his adulthood, he's been crippled. Yeah. He's been crippled and, and he's in Lulabar and he's looking at himself being crippled and when David finally calls him to him the Bible says that Mephibosheth comes to him in fear and David says be not afraid yeah. David, da David is literally saying I'm not going to kill you I know that you've lost a lot yeah. but don't be afraid I start to look at the contrast between our crippleness and our courage My God. oh God My God. sometimes we focus more on our crippleness than we do on the courage that God gave us. Oh God, I wish I had a church in this place this morning. Sometimes we focus so heavily on the things that's crippled in our life, the dysfunctions in our life, the malfunctions in our life, the things that's not working, the things that's not going, the thing that's not that's not operating the way we want it to. And God is saying, I need you to be courageous in this season and not focus on your crippleness. I know you're crippled, but you got some courage in you too. Oh well, yeah. You got, I know I know you got some courage because you're the survivor that's left where I killed everybody. You are a survivor, baby. You're the last one standing. You're still here. Even though your legs ain't standing, your life is standing. I wish I had somebody know what I'm talking about. Even though your legs ain't working, you're still living. Even though the thing ain't working out the way you want it to, you're still here. Everybody else around you is gone, but you are left. Come on. That's it. Yes. Yes. Do you have enough courage to offset the crippleness inside of you? Lord Jesus, can I, oh, he got me. He got yeah, me here yeah, for yeah. somebody. Come on. I know you're crippled on knowing things about mortgage, mortgages, but do you still have enough courage to go after your house? Mm. Yeah. Come on here. I know you're crippled because nobody taught you about banking and institution and about finances, but do you still have enough courage to go after the thing that God is telling you to go after? I know you're crippled not knowing everything about businesses and how it opens and how it and how it's constructed, but do you have enough courage to go after the thing? Do you have enough courage to offset your crippleness that you may be able to go forth in the thing God has called you to go to? Right. He says, I'm looking for anyone left from the house of Saul. And, 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 and Mephibosheth is brought to him by Ziba, the servant, and, and David begins to bless Mephibosheth. And, and when you put this text inside of that particular chapter, it makes a lot more sense why he's seeking out Mephibosheth. Now understand the season of David's life. David has just conquered multiple territories. The Bible says he's conquered multiple. If you read 2 Samuel chapter 8, he's conquered multiple territories. He's overcame numerous obstacles. He's, he's overcame leaps and, and, and battles of things, and, and, and he, he's now in a place of a famine where it seems like he should be in a place of victory and a favor. He finds himself in a famine. And, and, and I, I couldn't help but notice how just because he's blessed doesn't stop him from going through the test that God has for him. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Blessings doesn't stop testing. Oh, good. Can good. I tell it to you like that? That's it right there. Blessing, blessings doesn't stop testing. You still have to be tested even yeah. though you're blessed. You still have to go through some things with your blessed self. You still have to go and overcome some obstacles uh, even though you got the favor of the Lord on your life. Even though you got victory yeah. in all of these other areas, you still got places that you'll be tested in you and areas there. of your life. And, and yeah. David is probably in a confused and perplexed uh, situation in his own mind because he's like, I've just conquered all of these other enemies, but I got a now an uh, enemy that's inside of my own camp. Yes, you went there. Have you ever defeated things outside your house? Oh my God. And found yourself with battling with things on the inside of your house. Mm -hmm. Help us, Lord. Oh God. Lord. Oh God, I want to teach this thing more. When the Bible says that he had to deal with the house of Saul, house and kingdom is not just dealing with lineage or ancestry. Mm -hmm. 
when you look at house in a kingdom, you gotta look at it from a kingdom perspective like legislation, like the house of representatives or the house, the senate. When it says the house of Saul, it's talking about the laws that Saul ordains, the legislation that Saul ordains. It's talking about what he considers to be truth, what he considers to be stable, what he considers to be uh, the law, even though it may not be the law of God, it's the house of Saul. And, and you, when you look at the house of Saul, you can start to understand why God wants to rid that house. Because as he says, when he calls that, that house, he says they're a bloodthirsty house, which means they're a guilt-provoking house. Which means you're not innocent until proven guilty. You're guilty until proven innocent. Wow. Oh God, y'all don't know what I'm wow. talking about. He says, I gotta get rid of this house. Why? Because they, they have no mercy. Why well, I have mercy? They have no grace. Why well, I have grace? They don't show people kindness. How I show kindness? They always think you're guilty. And wow. they, 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 they want their blood to be uh, given on their own hands. And they want to apply my blood to the situation. So I gotta get rid of, of this house that does not allow true justice. Help us. Lord. Ah. Help us, Lord. The house of Saul. But David says, is there anybody else in the house of Saul that I can find to bless and show kindness? The house of Saul is growing weaker, but David's house is growing stronger. But yet David still looks to find somebody to bless. That's why God loved him so much. That's why God loved him so much. Because he was always a man after his own heart. He was always yeah. a person who was humbling himself. He, he never exalted himself even when he could. He was always seeking to try to get into the humility, the humility state of God's presence. And the Gibeonites, the Gibeonites are here and they're like, yo, these people tried to kill us and decimate us and wipe us out. Now, your Bible doesn't give us an account of this. It doesn't say, it doesn't tell us when Saul tried to kill them. It don't, it don't break it down for us like that. So, so it was kind of hard for David to know this. But here's what, interested, here's what I find interesting most in the text. There's a famine for three years. And it took three years before David asked God why there is no rain. Mm. It does say something about his management, and I can get on that all day. And it does say something about his provision. Yeah. But what it also says is that David was eating on last year's fruit and he was missing this year's fat. Oh God, I don't know who y'all to. It, it, it also says that because he had so much fruit from last year that he didn't recognize the famine that he was encountering this year. And I gotta pause for a moment because I know that you may think with your blessed self that you got a lot going on for you, but there are times where you are eating on last year's yeah. blessing and you are missing this year's burdens. You are missing wow. the famine that's happening this year because you're, you're, you're eating on last year's fruit. I need you to understand that your kingdom is not a skipping year kingdom. It doesn't skip a year. You're supposed to be blessed every year. You're supposed to get new bread every year. You're supposed to get new stuff every year. You're supposed to have a cycle of being blessed. It says I'll give uh, a seed to the sower and, and, and yeah. bread to the eater. It means that that's a continuation. Those who sow spiritually will reap spiritually. Those who sow bountifully shall reap bountifully. Yeah. You're supposed to have a cycle and you can't miss your cycle because of the crop that you're eating on in yeah. last year. Yeah. Sometimes uh -huh. oh God help me. You in there. Sometimes we settle with stale fruit. Because nothing grew mm -hmm. in our new seasons. Mm -hmm. Ha ha! Jesus, mm -hmm. sometimes we make stale fruit taste good. Oh my Lord. Oh Come my on Lord. here. Help us, Lord. We conjure up in our mind that this is okay. Lord, have mercy. That arguing like this is fine. Ha. Oh my God. That not getting the job is okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, oh Jesus. Preach it all about myself. Mm -hmm. We think just because we have certain blessings that we're not supposed to be blessed continually. Mm -hmm. And we start to settle in a place. And we say, okay, my life is good right here. Mm -hmm. If I got enough fruit to last me a few years, I'll be okay. Yeah. I don't want to seem greedy, so I'll be fine. But your Bible says. Uh-huh. That if you give, 
it shall be given unto you. Yes. A good measure. Come on. Press down. Press down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shaking together. Oh, yeah. And running up. What word? And running and what word? And running and what? And running. He says, I expect to run over my blessings in your life. You need to stop degrading yourself because you didn't get anything and start asking me, where is my running over? What am I doing to miss my running over? Tell me not to miss my running over. I expect God to give me a running over. Do I have anybody that expects God to run over their blessing? If you don't expect it, then don't ask for it. If you don't expect it, then eat your stale fruit. But if you expect it to run over, say, God, where is my running over? Oh, yeah. That's it. Oh, Lord. I don't yeah. go to the stuff. I go to the source. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. I don't go to the stuff. I'm going to the source. That's it. Three years it took them to finally say, I know this song. Mm -hmm. It rained in a minute around here. Mm -hmm. God was going on. Lord Jesus. And God didn't went home. God said, yeah, uh, he's bloodthirsty. House of Saul just tried to defile and decimate Gibeonites. They tried to take them out. Lord, have mercy. And, and, and for three and a half years, it wasn't raining because God cared about the pain of somebody that wasn't his people. Wow. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Wow. That was over your head. See, the Bible says that Gibeon wasn't Israelites. They were actually a part of the Amorites. I'm going to get into this thing in just a moment, I promise you. It was, it was actually the Amorites, and if you understand about the Amorites, God told them that they, they're supposed to wipe out the entire nation of the Amorites. Well, because the Gibeonites had a covenant, God honored the covenant. And he said, I, though these are not my people, they made a covenant with my people. And whenever my people make a covenant with another people, I will honor that other people, just like they're my people. So you can't defile them and, and expect me to bless you. You can't overlook what I, what I didn't do for them and expect me to give something to you. No, 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 baby. If you want to be blessed, you got to figure out what's going on with them because you made a covenant with them. So stop trying to look over people who don't go to your church and stop trying to look over people who are not a part of your faith and stop trying to look over people who don't, who don't speak the same language as you. When the Bible says that he cares about all people and if you made a covenant to protect the injustice, you got to protect everybody. Yeah, that's it right there. That's it right there. That's it right there. You. He, uh, he cared about the Gibeonites. Mm. And, 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 and he says, he says, you haven't received your harvest because they haven't received their healing. Mm. And I began to ask, I said, okay, God, what, what, what do we need to do to ensure we harvest our healing? Mm. Because I know there's some people who's been hurt. I know there's some people who people who's hurting right now. Yeah. I know there's some people who don't scream but still have scars. Oh my God. Oh yeah. I know there's some people who, who, who don't weep all the time but they still got wounds. Mm -hmm. Come on. I, I know there's some people where they're hurting and you can't diagnose it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, a, a thermometer won't tell you that their temperature is high. Don't Come on. But that temperature is still high. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. There's some people who are hurt in their bodies that, that, that you can't read by, by putting them on a CAT scan. That it won't show up. But, but, but they have hurt in their heart. And they have hurt in their lives. And they have pain. And God begins to show me and tell me that we, we have to start walking in, in a season where we're looking to harvest our healing. That's it. And not just give harvest for our hands. No, no, no. It's not coming to your hands this season. It's coming to your heart. That's it. It's not coming to your hands. It's coming to your heart. And I began to ask God, I said, okay, God, what do you have to do to, to harvest these seeds? He said, the first thing you got to do is you got to expose the hurt. Wow. You got to expose the hurt. Yeah. It, it, it took three and a half, excuse me, three years. It took three, four years for David to acknowledge that somebody around him was hurting. Wow. Uh, wow. He could not even see the pain of the people right next to him. Because he was so consumed by the harvest he was waiting for. That's heavy. That's heavy. My God. That's heavy. I know you may not like it, but the truth of the matter is sometimes we're blinded yeah. by the pain of the people that's right next to us. Yeah. Because of the things we're trying to get in our own possessions. If you cannot get your harvest until you acknowledge their healing. Y'all don't want to talk wow. to me. 
God says, I need you to acknowledge their healing before you begin to ask for your harvest. I need you to make sure that they're okay before you start asking me to give you more. I need you to make sure that they're going to make it through before you start asking me to take you to new heights. I need you to make sure that they're going to be okay before you start asking me why something is not growing. You have to look at the people who need to be healed and not focus all on your harvest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Oh, wow. God, help me, Jesus. Help me. The, the, the hurt, the hurt of the Gibeonites was restricting the harvest of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. ah. David was promoted. But being promoted in possessions also means you're promoted in pain. Wow. Promotion does not come without pain. That's right. You can't be promoted from boyfriend to husband and not incur more pain. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. You can't be promoted from employee to CEO and not incur more pain. You can't be, in, you can't be promoted as no child to having two children and not incur more pain. Promotion, uh, pain comes with promotion. Whenever you ask for promotion, you also ask for more pain. The level of the tolerance of your pain determines the level of the, uh, of the extent of your promotion. You can't go no higher than the pain you can deal with. And although David did not cause the pain, he had to heal the pain. Y'all ain't talking to me. See, certain covenants about marriages, most people understand, is that when you say, yes, I do, you don't just take on the good parts, baby. You take on the stuff that come with it that you had nothing to do with, that you ain't even, uh, uh, that you ain't even incur, that you ain't even have uh, any investment in. You say, why are you acting so crazy right now? Why are you going through your little different uh, situation? What's wrong with your head? Why you got your neck back and forth? It may not be because of you, but you inherit it when you say, I do. It's just the same way. Whenever you want to go up, you got to deal with the pain that increases. Pain always increases at the level of promotion. Boy, that's a word. When you want more blessings, you say, I want more pain. Oh, my God. My God. Oh, God. You went there. When you want more blessings, you say, I want more pain. David became king and he, and he incurred a deposit, uh, excuse me, a debt that was overdue from Saul. And it was his responsibility to pay for the debt. Why? Because once he says, I want the throne, he also says, I want everything that comes along with it. Wow. That's why you got to be careful who you make friends with. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, y'all ain't talking to me. You got to be careful who you make friends with. Why? Because if, if they can't handle all your pain, mm -hmm. then you'll find yourself trying to mask your pain just so you can give them all your pleasure. Wow. I, I, I was through this town all by myself. My God. Because, because they can't handle it, so you won't show them. Who you really are? Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all got those masks on now, but I'm talking about those other masks that you show them. Every time they come around, you like this, like, oh, girl, everything cool. When they leave, you in the middle. 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 Looking like Viola Davis on how to get away with murder. You got to stop sleeping at your nose and you cry because you can't show them who you really are. Oh, Lord, have mercy. My God. My God. Yikes. People around you are hurting. Yeah. And sometimes God will position you just to help them with their pain. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Oh Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. You are in certain people's life because you have something that they need yeah. to get over what they're dealing with. Yeah. yeah. That's why you gotta expose it. Mm -hmm. That's why you gotta shine the light on it. That's why you gotta bring it to the forefront. I know. I talked about it Wednesday. I know walking in the light is scary. Yeah. But baby, you don't never get to your purpose without exposing your pain. That's right. You can't never get to the place God has for you until you expose all your scars. Yeah. Until, you, until you say, this is me. This is who I am. For you, I live. For you, I die. For you, uh, God, I have my being. In you, I move. In you is my everything. You are my joy. You are my peace. I give my life away. I am nothing. I consider it all lost. You will never find out who you really are until you consider your pain to not be worth where you're going. Yeah. God. See, what I love about this text is that it reference us back to Joshua chapter number 9. Mm -hmm. That's when they first made the covenant. Okay. They, 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 they played hooky with Joshua. They, they snuck up on him. They, they dressed in some clothes and like they walked from a far distance. And they actually was around the corner, but they saw how, they, how the Israelites had whipped on Jericho and they out they said, now we ain't next. Right. We, 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 we ain't scared, but we, we smart. Mm -hmm. The truth matter is, they were scared a little bit. It was. They, were. they said, uh, yeah, we, we, we came from a faraway country. We just want to make a covenant. 
and they tricked Joshua to making a covenant. And the covenant God honored. But watch this. Gebeah went back to the house. They went back to the crib. Joshua went back to his territory. The Amorites found out about, the rest of the Amorites found out about Gebeah's, uh, Gibeah, excuse me, Gibeon's, uh, the Gibeonites, I should call them, the Gibeonites coming in with, with the Israelites, yeah. and they attacked them. Mm. And the Bible says that they sent messages to Joshua and say, we got a covenant. I need you to come help us. Now, I know all that may not be a reference point for you, but watch this. True. You remember old time where your Bible says that the sun stood still and it didn't move? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, That's him. That was during this fight. Mm. Oh. That was during the fight that the Israelites it came and helped the Gibeonites. And because God under the covenant, he exposed their enemies until he executed them. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That's why you got to expose all the things in your life. Why? Because God says in this season, I'm going to let the light be still on all your enemies. Until you see all the people that are hurting you. Until you see all the people that are laying around you. Until you see all the things that are coming against you. The sun is going to stand still right here in your life. Why? Because I'm trying to expose everything that's keeping you from going to the healing place I have for you to be. My God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He is going to expose mm -hmm. those lingering issues that we try to cover up. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you expose what God wants to execute? Wow. Can you expose what God wants to cut out of your life? Can you open up about the things he wants to use? And it's not so much the good areas. No. It's those areas for years that you kept in. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. That, that you said nothing about for years. Because when you don't expose the, the, the pain, you infect your progress. Because any wound that's not exposed can't be healed. Mm -hmm. it, need, it needs exposure to breathe. You're infecting, you're infecting, you're infecting your progress. So, so, so your wounds are affecting the progress because it's infecting mm -hmm. your progress. Yeah. Somebody say expose. Expose. I say, okay, well, I, I see exposure. He says the second thing you have to do is you have to examine the impact. Examine the impact. I said, what do you mean? He said, if you look at it, they said, they said silver and gold can't pay for this. Money can't buy this here. Uh, <laughs> gifts can't heal this one. Yeah. I can sit here all day, Lord Jesus. They said, we don't want to kill anybody in Israel. David said, just tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Oh, Lord. And they said, seven male sons of the house of Saul. That's right. Give them to us if you want to kill them. What they were saying was the level of pain that they put us through coats this level of healing that we need to get through. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. He said we examined the full impact of what they did. It wasn't the fact that you just hit me, that hurt me. Yeah. It was the mental abuse that stayed with me. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. It wasn't the fact that, that, that you just screamed at me, that hurt me. It was the things that you said that lingered with me that I have to access the impact. It wasn't just uh, the thing that you see that impacted me. No, baby. It was the years of me thinking about and recycling and repeating and going over the words and the actions that came from you that really assessed the true impact in my life. And if you don't assess the true impact, you can never accept, uh, accept the true healing. you got to be able to deal with uh, examining the places of your, uh, of your hurt in order for you to get the places of your healing. You have to know the fullness or the completion of your hurt mm -hmm. so that you can get the completion of your cure. Yes. That's why they said, give me seven. <laughs> why? Because seven represents completion. Yes. They said, this is the full 
culmination of our pain. They said, a sorry just won't do it this time. Y'all miss me. They said, getting back to normal just won't do it this time. They said, you just giving us a check won't help it this time. They said, you just buying us a gift won't hurt this pain. Yeah. No, they said, I'm tired of being, watch this, I'm, try, I'm tired of selling for, for, for cures that don't com completely heal me. Mm. I need to be made whole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to be made full. I, I, I need to walk out of here without having something that's lingering behind me. I need to be able to walk through this season without having something I got to look back and go get. I can't, I can't go outside and be worried about if somebody going to contaminate me. I need to walk in full healing. I can't go over here and worry about if you're talking about me. I got to walk in full healing. I can't go over here and think about, did you just do something to me? No, baby. I have to walk in full healing. I need all of this. I need the full around them. And if you can't get it, I know. See you later. Here we go. But I got to deal with my full head of why? Because I've been held back on my progress the more I let you to uh, uh, linger in my pain. My God. My God. I need the full healing. Y'all yes. don't know what I'm talking about. Yes. I need the full. I need it all. Mm -hmm. Elisha told Naaman. He says, bro, you got leprosy. Naaman can't even say you got spots. So he said, I know. You're like a leopard. Leprosy is anything that's unclean. Yeah. It's a disease, an infected disease. He said, you got leprosy. He said, he said, do this for me. Go to the dirty waters of Jordan. Oh, my Lord. And, and I need you to take yourself over there. Yeah. And I need you to dip. But don't dip once. How many times? Because once represents unity. Yeah. And you don't want to unify yourself with the pain no. that you have. You don't want to dip twice. Oh. Well, the twice represents agreement. And you don't want to stand in agreement. Yeah. For the pain that you have. You can't do it three times. Three represents perfection. And you start living your life as if you're perfect knowing that you got pain that's been lingering for years. You can't do it four. Four represents seasons. And you gotta stop going through the same season over and over. You can't do it five. This five is grace. It gives you enough grace to keep dipping. You can't do it six. Because six is the number of man. And man can't heal this one. You gotta do it seven times. Seven is the number of completion. I need you to dip seven times because I need you to be May home. Yes. Oh God. See, yes. see, see, the Bible says, Jesus said down. that they couldn't, that, that Elisha couldn't go to nobody yes. amongst his people. Why? Because nobody who knew him could take it because a prophet is without honor in his own home. So I may not be talking to anybody who know me, but for those who don't know me, I need you to dip seven times. Because yes. it's your time to walk out of your healing. God is in interrupting yes. your economy just to get you healed. I say God is interrupting this whole entire economy yes. just for your healing, just yes. for your breakthrough, just for you to be delivered, yes. just for you to come over, just for you to stop going through the same season, just for your famine to be lost. He says, I'm interrupting yes, God. this yes. entire economy Thank you, Lord. to make you whole. Yeah. Thank you, oh, God, I wish I had somebody who knew that, who knew that you was worth My an interruption God. in the entire economy. Because he cares about my well-being. Oh, God, y'all ain't talking to me. He cares about my mental anguish. So he gave me time at home to get myself together. Oh, God, y'all ain't talking to me. He gave me time by myself. So I had to deal with those people at work just to get over some things in my life. He's giving me time, baby, to harvest my healing. Why? Because he know I need to be complete. And I got to stop walking around here not dipping. The Bible says that, uh, just man fallen seven times. But he get it back up again. Seven is the number of completion. That means your seven time is your last time. I ain't falling no more. I ain't stuttering no more. I ain't dropping no more. You ain't going through it no more. I'm walking in the harvest Hallelujah. of my healing. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. See, you may can't accept it because you don't want to be healed, but I want to be made whole. Yeah. You may can't accept it because you don't want to be healed, I want to be made whole. Oh, my Lord. I want to I stop selling for, 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 for cures. They don't only really give me a portion of my healing. Y'all ain't talking to me. I'm tired of getting a portion of my heart healed. Come on here. I'm tired of getting a portion of my life healed. I need to walk in the fullness of God. I need to walk in the fullness of God. In the fullness of God. There is joy in the fullness. He says, I need you to examine the impact. I need you to expose the wound. And lastly, I need you to hurt what's already hurt. Mm. Mm. 
That's going to hurt a little bit. That's going to hurt a little bit. Hurt was already hurting. Mm -hmm. See, when, 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 when Gibeon and I said, when Gibeon and I said that they wanted to kill mm -hmm. seven male sons mm -hmm. of Saul's house, in this story, you don't see anything that's left to contention about how Mephibosheth may have felt about it. Mm -hmm. But when David goes off to fight Absalom, Ziba, Ziba, excuse me, Mephibosheth's servant, David said, where is, where is Mephibosheth? He says, he's back in Jerusalem, just in case you die, he's going to be king. Oh, my Lord. Mm -hmm. What that told me was that he was hurting. Because <laughs> when, I, when I can't fight with you, When I can't stand with you. When I can't be next to you and stand up in the battle. Mm -hmm. That means I'm still bruised. Mm -hmm. By what happened before. Mm -hmm. He still had his own wounds. Because it's him by himself now. Everybody from the house of Saul. Everybody who can carry on the name. David, except my fellowship. And I said, God, why do you want us to hurt what's already hurting? He said, because healing doesn't come mm. until you hurt the wound to give it permanent closure. Mm -hmm. See, when I was about eight or nine, we was playing baseball and I was the bat catcher. This boy from the neighborhood, he was up the bat. He swung the bat and he missed. And I went to pick up the ball. And he test swung and he swung real hard and hit me in the back of the head. And he bust my head. If you know anything, I got a big gash right here in the back of my head. Probably knocked some sense out of me. That's why I'd be up here singing songs and stuff. Blame him. Lord have mercy. Blame him. Name the alcohol, blame him. Praise God. <laughs> but he bust my head. And, and I remember, I, 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 I wasn't crying. I wasn't crying. Until I saw the blood. Mm -hmm. When I saw the blood, I lost it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I began to just cry. Yeah. And, 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 and my grandmother, I remember her like yesterday. She was like, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And they began to drive me to the hospital. Yeah. And I got to the hospital. And, and it, my head was hurting because I had a headache. Right. But the pain wasn't unbearable. Okay. Until, Until. the surgeon mm -hmm. said, we're going to have to put stitches mm -hmm. oh, yeah. in your head. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, put me to sleep. Not granted, no, we can't put you to sleep. Right. Because right. of where it's located. Mm -hmm. The swelling. We don't know yeah. side effects. My so God. you got to stay awake. Oh, <laughs> and what was hurting yeah. is now going to hurt worse. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I said, wait. We can just leave it open and let it, let it close by itself. And we can just let that thing just... He said, no, because if you leave it open... What I could have cured you with yeah. will now kill you, yeah. even though this was a simple, uh, okay. a simple procedure, yeah. because you didn't allow me to hurt what was already hurting. Ooh. The thing that you should have lived through will now kill you. Yeah. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you got some squatting in your life that, that God says he needs to stitch back together, but it's going to hurt a little bit. Wow. But, but if you're not in the hurt that place, why? Because whenever you start talking about it, it hurt again. Whenever you start yeah. thinking about it, it hurt again. Yeah. Whenever you bring it back up, it hurt again. Whenever yeah. you go through the motion, it hurt again. And you're like, I'm just tired of talking about it. God says, I need you to hurt what's hurting me behind because if you don't, I can never heal. It'll yeah. never close up. Yeah. Oh, God. And you'll be dying from something that you should have lived through. Y'all don't want to talk to me. My he God. says, I need you to understand that you can deal with what's hurting. And I begin to look at Mephibosheth. Because if you remember, I told you Mephibosheth, he was crippled. He yeah. was already hurting. He already didn't have any functionality in his legs. He already was malfunctioning. Yeah. He always would deal with his own issues. And then now you take his brothers. And now you take his cousins. Now you take the people in his family in his household. Now you kill all the male sources to where he's the only one left. And I said, God, why, why did he do it? And why did, uh, why did David keep him? I know he stands in front of the older Jonathan, but it has to be something more. He says, yeah, don't you know who Mephibosheth 
Mephibosheth is? I said, yeah. He said, he's a crippled man. He said, no, you missed it. Mephibosheth is the son of, uh, of Saul. I, 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 he's, the, he's the grandson of Saul. I'm sorry. I said, yeah, I got to understand that. He said, but what, don't excuse me. He said, what does that mean? I'm getting happy. He said, what does that mean? I said, it means he's the grandson of Saul. He said, no, it means he has the gene of a king. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. See, even though he was crippled, he still had the gene of a king. And I know that you got some crippled areas. And I know that your hurt is hurting you right now. And I know that you think it's a crippled place in your life. But you still have the gene of a king. His, his DNA is still in your blood. His, his bloodline is still inside of you. Even though stuff ain't working the way you think it should, you still have the gene of a king. I got to stop getting happy. I got happy all about myself. Because I can't, I can't think about me having a gene and not get happy. I can't think of me not have, having his blood and not get happy. That he's the king, watch this, of kings. So when yes. David said, I'll keep Mephibosheth, he was putting himself in a position to be a king. Yes. Of a king. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. He, he was saying, I know that you're hurting, but I can make it heal. And, and I'm not going to give you uh, the full uh, lineage of, of, of Mephibosheth. But yes. watch this. The Bible says his legs weren't working. That means other stuff wasn't too. Oh, Lord. But... But what working? Start working. And he started working. Yeah. <laughs> what used to not work. Okay. And the Bible says he had a son named Micah. Yeah. The Bible says Micah is named. Who? It means who but the Lord. Uh -huh. And Mephibosheth's original name is Meribel or Meribal. Meribel is the correct terminology. It means who? It means I worship Baal. Mm. But he had a son named Micah. Yeah. And Micah had a son and some sons. And his son had some sons and some sons. And his son had some sons and some sons. And four generations later, they end up having a son by the name of Obadiah. Now, I know we cannot uh, trace the prophet Obadiah lineage in the Bible. We don't know where it came from. We don't know where, uh, what, where he, yeah. where, where, where family he's from. We can't figure out what lineage Obadiah is from. But his yeah. name means servant of the Lord. So even though Mephibosheth in this present state didn't have his ability in his legs, even though he was hurt, even though he needed healing, the Bible says that he harvests out a lineage that ended up serving God. Why? Because he didn't die when the economy was interrupted, but he got his full healing because he had genes of a king. Yes. God, I got so happy. Yes. I get excited about this thing. Y'all yes. don't hear what I'm saying? Yes. The man who at once uh, worshipped the false god, uh -huh. birthed out a lineage wor worshipping the true god. That's it right there. Yes. His harvest, his harvest mm -hmm. manifested because he can deal with being hurt in places that he was already hurt. Yes. Yes. Ooh. Hallelujah. Ooh. The Gibbonites. The Gibbonites. Said David, we need seven. Mm -hmm. Kill seven. Kill seven of their male sons. Mm -hmm. I get happy. I get happy. Pray for me. Hallelujah. Kill seven. Because seven is the number of completion of our healing. Mm -hmm. And I begin to ask God, I say, God, when people expose this and they examine the impact, want to tear down marriages. My Lord. Want it destroy relationships. And in, in this economy interruptions, interruption, if we go back to the house, I don't know if people can survive. Mm. God said, ha. He said, that's why they asked for seven. Yeah. Because it was completion. Okay. But that's why Mephibosheth was number eight. Mm -hmm. Because he was new beginning. I like that. And I don't know who I'm talking to. Yeah. But you can't worry about what other people like and don't like. Oh, God. Right. You can't worry about yeah. who you lose and you don't lose. You can't worry about, in this season, what, what you will have to give up. You can't worry about the things that's, that's not going to uh, affect other people because it's, it's hurting you. And God says, I'm giving you this time to harvest your healing. Not because you want to lose yourself, but because you are the new number eight. That's why David can get along with Mephibosheth because just like Mephibosheth was number eight, so is David number eight. And I need you to understand that you are a new person in Christ Jesus, that you are new. And when you let old things pass yeah. away, I like that. Yeah. Behold, yeah. all things will become new. Thank you, Lord. You Thank are number you, eight. 
You are not the pain. You are not the pain that you've been living with. That's not who you are. You're not the hurt that you've been hoarding. That's not who you are. You are more than that. You are more than that. Even in your crippleness, you're more than that. Thank you, God. Even in your dysfunction, you're more than that. You are the new beginning. Thank you, God. You start the lineage from you. God. Your name is no longer associated with the house of Saul. The Bible says that David told him that you'll eat from my table all the days of your life. And you'll be just like a son to me as my son, which means his name changed. Mm. The name you grew up associated with mm. is not the name that you have to end your life. My Lord. Dedicated to me. My Lord. My Lord. You associated now with a king. Thank you, God. I wish I had somebody to believe that. I wish I had somebody to receive it. You are associated now with the king. Yes. You are associated now with the king. You are associated now with the king. Yes, he is. When everybody else loses, mm -hmm. he picks you to be saved. Thank you, Lord. He picks you to win. He picks you to survive. Yes. Why? Because your name changed. Thank you, Lord. God has given us interruptions. Not for distractions. Yeah. And not for disruptions. No. But for healing. For harvesting. Healing. In this season. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about not just about relational pain sometimes it's about parental pain sometimes your children hurt you they don't even know it sometimes it's not just people sometimes you hurt yourself sometimes you make bad choices that you know you shouldn't have made and you've been living with them for years God says, it's this, it's this season now. Mm -hmm. It's this season that you harvest. Mm -hmm. Expect your healing to come forth. I know you don't see the rain, but expect your healing. I know it looks like nothing else in your life is going, but expect for healing to come forth. That's good. That's good. They said, this is the beginning of body season. That means it's the beginning of harvest season. And God wants you to reap healing. And he's so he sold. He sold. He stopped the rain so that you can be healed. Yeah. Lot left Abraham. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it hurt him. Mm -hmm. And the family came. Right. Stopped the rain so that you can be healed. Joshua brothers threw him in a pit. Then the famine came. He stopped the rain. So Josh, excuse me, so Joseph. So Joseph can be healed. Moses, Kendrick. They doubted who he was. They said, you're killers just like the Egyptian. And then God said, I'm sending you back. Stopping the rain so you can be healed. Jesus came in 
the world crucified him. The world crucified him. Just so we can be healed. Thank you, Jesus. He stopped everything else from raining. Ha! Just so he can rain. And we can be healed. I believe God is telling somebody to harvest your healing. I believe this is your time right now to be made home. I want to pray with you. If you can just bow your heads and close your eyes wherever you are. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the people who are walking in their healing. Huh? The people that are fighting for the fullness of God. I thank you for the people who don't even know where to start. I pray that they start right now by just confessing, God, I need to be here. Yes, Lord. By exposing the areas of their pain. By allowing you to examine the impact. And by not being afraid to hurt some of the places that's already hurt. My God. I pray in the name of Jesus that healing comes to their house right now. That healing comes to their cars right now. Yes, sir. That healing meets them in the name of Jesus. That they are healed, Father God. Not just today, but as they walk out their week, they're walking in healing, Father God. That the rest of the month and the rest of the year, that they are exercising their healing, Father God. They understand that this is a season of healing right now, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that they are made whole right now, Father God. That the completeness of their healing is manifested unto them, Father God. And you give them the fullness thereof, Father God. Allow them to walk and a life that's made whole, God. Not made halfway, because you didn't call us to a halfway life. You didn't call us to live a life where one part works and the other doesn't. I pray for healing in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Heal their minds, heal their hearts. Father, we know, we know that you are the ultimate healer. Yes, he is. We know that you hear us when we cry. I pray that before you heal our land, yes, that you heal our hearts. Mm. 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 Before you heal our land, my God, you heal our hearts. We know you can and we believe that you will. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.